The other thing was that um, you all remember uh, Gordon Sundland. He was the EU ambassador, hotelier, who had given a million dollars to Donald Trump's inauguration bust of a festival. Best people. Exactly. Um, And he was the uh, main ringleader for the attempts to get the Ukraine, or get Ukraine, I should say, uh, to, at the very least, hold a press conference and say they are investigating Joe Biden. And uh, he had claimed no quid pro quo. That was until Bill Taylor testified. And then all of a sudden he remembered, wait a second, no, I meant there was a quid pro quo because I am a hotelier and I can't run my hotels if I'm in prison. So uh, apparently his attorney uh, yesterday, today, or I should say last night, confirmed that, in fact, Sundland uh, did testify that there was a quid pro quo. And uh, as he uh, went back in for sort of a corrective disposition, uh, deposition. Uh, So he did say there was a quid pro quo to the extent that he can make that determination because he's not a lawyer. Because if you uh, if there's anything you've done that can be expressed in Latin, apparently you need to be a lawyer to know whether you've done it or not. Meanwhile, now we're going to see part of the pivot and part of the pivot is going to be that, okay, there was a quid pro quo, but that doesn't mean anything. And they have to do that because there's now a another. This is a completely new individual, a lieutenant colonel. Last name of Vendman who is going to be testifying today that uh, he was national security uh, on the national security team, spoke spoke Ukrainian, and uh, apparently uh, was born in Ukraine. Apparently he was also bothered by what happened directly on the call. He didn't even know all the backstory of what was actually going on. And he confronted Sundland, Uh, And also told John Bolton that there was a problem here. So understand there's two elements really to this whole story in terms of the quid pro quo. One is the not so specific transcript or at least the assessment of the call, the representation of the call. There were the people who were actually there listening to the call. And then there's the whole story of what all the underlings were doing in the background relative to that call. So, you know, I can tell Matt here, Matt, I want this show to be uh, successful and uh, get advertising bought. And then Matt goes and tells Brendan, we got to buy advertising. Jamie, make posters. So we have both elements of that, both my conversation with Matt and what Matt is coordinating with other people to execute my agenda. Here's Laura Ingram, and this is what they're going to do. They're going to chuckle a lot when they talk about this. And why are they going to do that? Because that's going to communicate to their audience that this is no big deal. This is sort of the inverse of why it was so important for the Democrats to hold, to have impeachment and to announce that it's impeachable. Because when they do, it is a cue to the audience saying like, this is serious. But if we chuckle during it, It's not serious. Wait till we get to when we talk about the wildfires in California and we all just laugh and no one's going to take it seriously. But here is uh, Laura Ingram chuckling her way through this whole thing. And it's especially notable because she has on her um, on her show a torture enabler and an accused pedophile. This is buried in the New York Times piece tonight, but I found it very interesting. Um, He's a a decorated colonel, by the way, in the Iraq war. But because Colonel Vindeman emigrated from Ukraine along with his family when he was a child and is fluent in Ukrainian and Russian, Ukrainian officials sought advice from him about how to deal with Mr. Giuliani, though they typically communicated in English. Now, wait a second, John. (laughs) Here we have... A U.S. national security official. Pause it. Let me tell you something. That is such a fake laugh. It's a fake laugh. All right. I, 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 I worked in the entertainment business. That's a fake laugh. Um, just to be clear, Ukrainian officials were so freaked out by uh, Rudy Giuliani 
that they spoke to a national security uh, advisor in the White House to try and figure out, like, how are we supposed to, like, what, what are we supposed to do here? It had nothing to do with the fact that they spoke English uh, or that, uh, that uh, Giuliani did. The question is, like, wait, this guy's not a government official. Well, how are we supposed to deal with him? And we trust you because you're Ukrainian. And you were born in Ukraine. You may have a little bit more insight as to how we're supposed to react. Now, wait a second, John. <laughs> Here we have a U.S. <laughs> national security official who is advising Ukraine while working inside the White House, apparently against the president's interest, and usually they spoke in English. Isn't that kind of an interesting angle on this story? I find that astounding. And, you know, some people might call that espionage. Uh, but it doesn't actually seem to add any new facts to what we know. Pause if it for one more second. The president's own interests were represented by his personal lawyer. It cannot be espionage because espionage is when you uh, undertake to subvert something that ha has to do with national security, not the president's own interests. This is, I mean, first of all, he's at Berkeley, right? Like, if you're a Berkeley law student, you should go down to the registrar's office and see if you can transfer now. Yeah, walk out. I mean, it's disgusting. It was disgusting when this guy was rehabilitated before. It was, it, it, it's, it's disgusting any new facts to what we know if uh, you know uh, in terms of I think Alan raises a good point is this a high crime and misdemeanor whether you have one person or five people all saying well we objected to what the president said with the president of Ukraine we have the transcript of the call we can all make our judgment uh, I don't see how this uh, breaking news actually adds more facts mm -hmm. to what we know about whether this is an impeachable offense or not it doesn't add any facts it just has one more person who who clearly will testify it was quid pro quo. And to a certain extent, I agree with John Yu. You could you could have impeached the president three weeks ago, based upon what we know on that transcript. But the fact is, it's a political process, and if you have a dozen people who say there was a quid pro quo, uh, it makes it that much stronger of a case. But the idea that this is espionage and we should be worried because somehow he was born in Ukraine. You know who else was not born in the United States? John Yu. Born in South Korea, apparently. Back in 1967. Hmm. There was a lot of, a lot of communist agents running around yeah. South Korea in the, in the mid-60s. Sleeper cell. Yeah, it could be. Uh, honestly, though, um, for anybody who has any shock that John Yu is um, a, uh, a, a right-wing hack, I would point you to every reason why you know John Yu's name as to uh, what should have established that for you beforehand. Um, we will talk more about this uh, later in the program. But uh, speaking of which...